Oh no, not again. Right, go! Good job. I think in 2024 I should build them a boat. Where's Big Mama? What better day than maybe the end of 2023 to open an accomplishment? You guys, you did this. <laughs> All right, good morning, you guys. Oi, today is just like rearranging. Um, giving these guys more room, which they look very happy about. And uh, my little guy from the warming room is now mine. So I'm gonna, I left this guy in the pen because it's the smallest, it's sort of the runt, but he's a really good trainer. So, or her, she is a good trainer. So I'm gonna let her tried to train this one. You're <laughs> my baby. Hey, we got a friend. Look. We got a friend right here. Okay, it's gonna be a bit loud, so bear with me for a sec. I had full intentions of keeping this first group of ewes and their babies in their own pen, the second group in their own pen, the third group in their own pen. What has happened is the first pen, it's getting shorted because I wanted to make the baby pen, the bottle baby pen bigger, and it just encroached so much on that uh, first pen that I'm like, no, let's put these all together. They've been in their own pens for a couple weeks now, at least two, maybe three. So they're well, they're really good and bonded. They're all on creep now, the lambs. So I just made the decision, let's put this group together. The first two pens are together now, so that's like 70 ewes and their babies. It's okay, it's not ideal. I wish it could have been like 35 and 35, but because they were already established, it's too hard to like grab one ewe or five ewes and their babies and try to separate them, put them in another pen. So we're just gonna do this. Uh, they've got this creep area still from the very beginning and then I have that second creep area that I put at the back there. So they've still got the creep areas where they're used to them. So I haven't changed anything, so hopefully they'll just figure out life uh, as best they can. I did get my little warm room baby onto the nipple pretty quick. So I'll work with him today. I've also got a couple lambs that have gone sort of backwards with their mom. They're only a couple days old. I just, they looked really skinny this morning when I was feeding bottles. So I'm gonna continue supplementing them today with a bottle and then by tonight, I will grab the best drinkers and bring them up and train them tomorrow. So yeah, this week will just be uh, a little bit of rest, a little bit of house cleanup from Christmas and the rest of the time we'll be training new lambs on the machine. So I do have the starter pen still and I left our little runt in here with my baby. But I think he's getting it figured out, which is great. You're a smart little baby. Okay, Piper, let's go. Thought I would give you a little update because this is our night check. It's weird coming out at night when I don't 
have to deliver any babies. But we have been working with our newest additions today. We have, we ended up with one, two, three, four new ones. And I think we've got them all trained already. My little one is doing so well. I can't believe it. And this is the only one, this big one is the only one I sort of topped off with the bottle. Um, and I actually think maybe he's he's a bit tall for where it's for where it's positioned, but he just needs to get his head figured out to tilt. We got the ring around the rosy going again. That is my most favorite thing. And our newest graduates are just having the time of their life in the big kid pen. I fed you already. Don't. Try to tell the people that I didn't, because I did. Don't be spreading misinformation. <laughs> Good morning. I can't believe it is the last day of 2023. Thought I would bring you along for some chores this morning and also to show you what we've been experiencing the last few days. Just a lot of water. We are extremely moist. Uh, not exactly December weather for where we live. It's usually the white stuff, but uh, yeah, we've had a lot of rain and like our grass is still green. I am on chore duty this weekend. Carissa is, uh, I think she had Christmas today, yesterday, Christmas yesterday, and she's got New Year's celebrations tonight. So she asked to be off until Tuesday, which rightly so. Mark and I really don't have a lot of plans. So I think it's gonna be like movies in bed maybe tonight is uh, probably on our agenda. All right, well, I think the Golden Girls are probably gonna want some treats. I think in 2024, I should build them a boat. Well, it wouldn't be the end of 2023 if Sandy didn't leave yet another gate open. Literally the last time I did chores, I left the gate open. But uh, anyway, they are well trained. They went back in the door that they came out. So with that fire being put out, I thought I would come on here real quick, hopefully quick, we'll see, 
and go over some results from 2023. I, I've spent uh, most of the morning since chores going through and um, texting my sister for some numbers that I didn't have. In the last video we went over the winter lambing results which uh, I do pretty much, I do that really at the end of every lambing group. So what I started doing last year is going through the entire year's lambing results and sort of looking back at the last few years to see if we've improved. My goal has always been to improve uh, lamb numbers, lamb livability, and lambs born per you is uh, it's a good baseline to start at. So for 2023, shockingly, our numbers have gone up. And I'm, I'm shocked because I feel like I have less ewes that I'm working with. In 2023, we had 964 lambs total born out of 387 total ewes, which is 2.49 lambs per ewe born. So they aren't all alive. Uh, to compare that to the previous one, two, three years, I have records from 2020, 21, 22 that I can look back at. So 2022, we had 864 lambs born out of 390 ewes for a total of 2.22 lambs per ewe. 2021's results was 805 lambs out of 380 ewes, which is a total of 2.12 lambs per ewe. And then in 2020, we had 820 lambs born out of 422 ewes for a total of 1.96 lambs per ewe. So we have continuously gone up. We, did, we had quite a big jump this year in 2023. However, I believe my mortality was a little higher. So I think our stillborns were quite a bit more this year, which sort of aligns. It does track a little bit with having so many quads and quints and stuff. So I will have to dig a little bit deeper into my mortality. The problem is this year I did do one of my lambing groups on a different software system. So I did it on Flockwatch. And part of the reason I sort of went back to Gallagher is because with the Flockwatch, I wasn't able to... Um, allocate what the lambs died of when they were born, if they were stillborn, if they're weak, if they're, there's no, there was no menu for me to, to select how they died. What I've been trying to over the years is keep track of how those animals are dying at birth. So if it's stillborn, um, even with stillborns, is it a mummified lamb? Is it a deformity? Is it Cache Valley? Like I'm sort of trying to define what the mortality is so I can maybe <laughs> hone in on the moms as to what to do. So uh, with the flock watch, it's, it didn't have that when I was doing my lambing group. So I am short that data, which I don't love. So I haven't been able to really compare this year's to the other three years data in terms of stillborn. The other thing I sort of wanted to start keeping track of in terms of improvement was our breeding results. So I went through and calculated how many ewes that uh, were put in the breeding group, and then I uh, figured out how many ewes actually lambed by going through my lambing data. So I went through spring, summer, fall, and winter, and uh, for the total, we had 446 ewes that were put with rams and uh, 387 of them, obviously, because I just told you those numbers, were the ewes that lambed. So that's a total of 87% of my ewes that got pregnant. That's an amazing uh, conception rate. Um, my spring lammers that would have been bred in their natural season were 89%. The summer group that would have been bred in, in January was 85%. My fall group, which is typically my one of my bad groups, was bred in April. They were 85%. And my winter group, which are bred in July, was 87%. So uh, really good numbers. I'm very proud of those numbers. I will attribute that to having way too many rams. <laughs> so uh, when I started uh, cedaring sheep, everything that I read was you can easily have five ewes per ram. I argue though here in the spring breed and the summer breed, uh, I've been putting more rams in, so less ewes per ram, and I think that's why my results are a little bit better. We also put those fans in, so whether it's just keeping them a little bit cooler in the summer, 
uh, that could also be why, but um, it's nice to see that, you know, spending a little bit more money on rams and keeping them here and spending that money on those fans is, is definitely, it definitely paid back this year. Will it keep doing that? Uh, I have no idea, hopefully. And the other thing that I kept track of this year, um, I actually had texted my sister just to confirm my numbers. Uh, we sold 600 and 630 lambs this year and 77 sheep. In terms of replacement lambs, I kept 69 replacement lambs from this year's groups. In looking at that, I did a pretty good job of matching the replacement animals to the animals that I sold. Actually wasn't really intentional, I just sort of get a good feeling for what groups I want to take use out of. And um, sort of with my evaluation, I ended up with the right amount of views, which shocked me as well. So that is 2023. Uh, I am just so happy we got through it and we actually got through it better than when I'm here way more. This year the sheep definitely just went down on the priority list with Jess being ill. Um, I definitely needed to put her first this summer. I still got the jobs done but let me tell you they weren't top of mind for me this year and uh, I'm just so grateful and I've talked about this before, I'm so grateful I had systems in place prior to life happening that I was able to sort of go on autopilot in here and get these things done. And it was actually quite successful considering um, definitely my heart and my head w was not in here 100% like it typically is. Very, very grateful to past Sandy for being a little neurotic with her systems and developing systems because this year uh, it proved to be a huge asset for me. Anyway, I'm really proud of these results and I'm putting them in my bullet journal. Uh, that is another thing that I've sort of kept up with and I'm going to create one for the sheep barn this year. And I have no idea what that's gonna look like. So I'm gonna play around with that maybe today and tomorrow. Sorry if numbers is boring to you guys, but I bring you along for all these things and I never really ever have a conclusion. There's never any, you know, well, how did you actually do? So I thought I would just share it for those that are interested. And I'm sorry if you're not interested. I'm sorry if you're bored. <laughs> so another thing happened this year in 2023 and I have been sitting on this since like June, I think, but I have been so preoccupied with Jess and with life that I haven't opened it yet. And that's the uh, YouTube, the gold play button. This was never a goal. Like it was never a goal to ever hit a million subscribers. It's funny, the things that you think are so important and so life-changing and then it happens and life doesn't change. In fact, I was in literal hell when this exciting thing happened. So I guess in a way, seeing this sort of takes me back to when we were dealing with the scariest thing our family has ever dealt with. And uh, so I guess I just, it's been sitting under my desk. Uh, I see the box once in a while when I look under my desk, but for the most part, I've forgotten about it. And I thought, you know what? 2023 needs to end on a good note for not only me, but you guys. You've been through a lot with me this year, my rider, my rider dies. And I feel you. I know you've been here. I see your comments and your loving wishes and prayers. And I thought, what better day than maybe the end of 2023 to open an accomplishment. It's a pretty big deal that someone's click subscribe after one or a couple videos and I really do truly appreciate it and what better way to do that than to open this with you guys. My family is not sitting with me, no one's sitting with me and I have talked to close friends about this that YouTube as as huge as it is, I have a big audience it's very lonely. It can be a very lonely place because I don't have a lot of people I can share this stuff with. Uh, so I'm sharing it with over a million strangers. And the weird thing is, I don't think there's anyone else I'd want to share it with. So uh, thank you for being here. And let's 
cut into this. I don't know if everybody else cuts into it with the same knife they use to cut open their straw bales in the morning, but that's what we're gonna do. I will say this, the box is a lot bigger than the than the silver play, so, and it's quite a bit heavier. So, let's see. You guys actually wanna see me open this? All right, let's see what this looks like. Whoa. It is a big one. You did it. One mission, one channel, and one more thing. One million subscribers. Congratulations. You have started with just a few viewers, but your voice, passion, and creativity have now touched the lives of people around the world, and the community you've built is enriched by the stories you've shared as you bring people together. To honor this milestone, we are proud to present you with the Gold Creator Award. We hope this special recognition will remind you how much you mean to so many. Every day you are redefining how content is created and watched one voice and one video at a time. It's a privilege to be part of your journey. We can't wait to see what you do next. So that is the letter. And this is the beast. She big. You guys, you did this. <laughs> so thank you. This is lovely, and it's really heavy, actually. Let's take you right out, shall we? That's the beast. It's gold, it's pretty. Thank you guys for this, and for just letting me show up. It's sort of crazy. I will say my channel is made up of two different audiences. I have an audience that of people that probably only watch my shorts and I'm glad I sort of jumped on that bandwagon a couple years ago when it was still in beta. Um, I had a lot of my community yelling at me when I started making shorts because they didn't understand what was happening. Fun fact about me, I do a lot of research when it comes to YouTube and and I saw years ago that this was happening and they were trying to keep up with uh, TikTok and Instagram and, and all the platforms and uh, so I jumped on it long before many others did. And I do think that the, that did sort of propel the channel. I saw a big increase in subs when I started doing shorts. In saying that, I will say I don't love short form content. Um, I love my audience here uh, in my long form content because you're the ones that I've established a relationship with. My shorts is okay. And what I use my shorts as is sort of like a greatest hits, like a, a way that I just pull out really special moments of the, of the videos you guys have already seen or a special moment that, you know, I might've just touched upon, you know, in a big long half an hour video. Why I've pulled that out is because you guys have commented or seen a certain area of a video and it, and it resonated with you. So I never really set on doing shorts to gain a separate audience. It was more to give my viewers the chance to take home a little a little snack of the longer form video, like something that they really liked and they could share it easily with someone. I will say the short form videos also brings in a lot of people that don't want to take the time to get to learn, to get to know me or my family or why we're doing what we're doing. So I tend to not look at the comments over there because they're for every good comment, which I know is coming from you guys, uh, there's lots of negative over there. So I just leave that where it needs to be and I cultivate my community over here. The ones that show up each week and each video are the ones that I, uh, I hold near and dear to my heart and I make the content for you guys. So thank you for engaging and thank you for letting me know what you like to watch and the questions that you ask because that helps me sort of um, look at my content and figuring out how to make things a little more transparent for you guys and and you know just understand sort of maybe not really what we do but who we are as people that's always been the mission of this channel is to um, not get so caught up in what we do for a living but how it affects us as people and as humans and how we are as humans and I think this year has been a good example of yes the sheep take up you know uh, quite a quite a majority of my my time and 
my headspace and my content. But there's a whole other side that uh, you got to see this year that usually I don't have the camera on for. So I appreciate those that stuck around for that because it's uh, it can be very raw and it can be very hard to edit uh, and it can be very hard to share. It can be very scary to share. So thank you for being, being you and giving me the courage to do that. In saying that, I'm hoping this year is a little nicer to the heartstrings. Yeah, 2024 is gonna be an interesting year, but um, 2023 was also an interesting year. And uh, one for the history books. We learned a lot about us and about our family, and uh, I'm, just, I'm just really glad it's over. <laughs> Bye.